from Fargo and serving you on TV, online, and on the go. This is Valley News Live at 6. New details tonight on a developing story we've been following out of Moorhead. Good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us tonight. We're learning more about the two men arrested last night during a four-hour standoff with law enforcement. Hector Antonio Flores and Hector Lionel Flores have been in, in and out of prison for years and have served time for some serious felonies. Valley News Team's crime and safety reporter Nicole Johnson has been investigating all day and joins us live with new information. Nicole, what can you tell us? The two brothers may have a gang affiliation, but when I asked Moorhead police about it, they couldn't comment. The jail staff in Moorhead told me they know the two well since they were in their teens. 36-year-old Hector Antonio Flores was wanted by police for attempted murder. Back in 2004, he shot another man at a Moorhead house party. The bullet hit the victim in the hand after he moved into protect his chest. Flores also went to prison for robbery, selling drugs, domestic assault, having a gun illegally, terroristic threats, and escaping from custody. His brother, 38-year-old Hector Lionel Flores, was wanted on a drug warrant. He's gone to prison before for multiple assaults, running from police, escaping custody, giving officers a fake name, and according to court documents, he's the one who was living in the home where the standoff began. Right now, the two are being held in jail on the arrest warrants. The Street Crimes Unit and U.S. Marshals have been running surveillance on them. We don't know what charges they'll face from the standoff last night. We're told the prosecuting attorneys are looking over what happened and will decide. Okay, thank you, Nicole. Five people were arrested last night, but three of them were let go. There was also an eight-year-old child in the house. Police say they got the child out first before arresting the others. Police also found guns, a bat, and a small amount of drugs inside the home. A Valley City man is in jail after police say he used his truck as a weapon during a love triangle gone wrong. 43-year-old Tim Johnson is facing second-degree felony assault charges and is accused of ramming his pickup truck into another man's car and injuring him. Officers say that Johnson's girlfriend and, his, her, and her ex-boyfriend met to exchange property from their former relationship. Well, Johnson rammed his pickup into his girlfriend's ex-boyfriend's car. The former boyfriend was taken to Essentia Hospital with back pain. His condition is unknown. Clay County and the city of Moorhead would like the community's help to get the city a new law enforcement center without raising property taxes. On November 8th, residents will be voting on whether or not Clay County will be authorized to impose a sales and use tax of one half cent for 20 years or until the project is paid for. City business leaders support the need for a new jail and law enforcement center, saying the current facility is deteriorating, lacking enough space, and is in, in need of technical upgrades. There is no way that we can get by without having a property tax increase on this project if the sales tax does not go. And the comments made by the Moore Business Association in the chamber uh, is accurate in saying that we'd be looking at double-digit increases. Officials say voting no to a sales tax is saying yes to a potential property tax increase, which would negatively impact business and farm properties. Neighbors in North Fargo are reporting an out-of-the-ordinary TV crew on their block. The reports are along 26th Street South. We received one call telling us about a Channel 69 news van parked along the street. Residents tell us that they are concerned because they don't know who owns the van and that it's been sitting there for the past three weeks. Just a, somebody parked a junker there and forgot about it. <laughs> you know? I, I felt it was very strange to have a news channel with 69 on it news. Yeah. Um, I was wondering where it was from. I thought it was funny at first. I was like, what in the world is that? And then my old man decided to turn around so we could get a picture of it. And we took the picture and the closer we got to it, it just struck a red flag. Rest assured, there's not a new TV station in the FM area. We spoke with a man who lives on the street. Turns out the van belongs to his son and was used as part of the Fargo South Homecoming Parade. He said they plan on painting over the writing. Two people were rescued from frigid waters after their boat capsized while they were duck hunting. Cass County Sheriff Tom Birch says they got the call around 6.20 this morning. Two people were in the water southeast of Battle Point on the east side of Leech Lake. Deputies were able to find the men by using cell phone mapping technology. The hunters had fallen into the water, but were on top of the boat when they were found. Sheriff Birch says the conditions were windy and dark at the time of the rescue. 
The Dakota Access protests are costing North Dakota and the taxpayers a lot of money. And today, the State Emergency Commission approved a plan to borrow even more money to cover the costs. The Emergency Commission borrowed, approved borrowing $4 million. Now, that's on top of the $6 million loan approved back in mid-September. That money's already spent. The loan will come from the Bank of North Dakota and is estimated to cover costs associated with the protests through December 1st. Most of the money will go toward covering personnel costs, but also toward paying the federal government for equipment the state has borrowed, such as Humvees and helicopters. Uh, obviously, we have to uh, put the money forward as it's needed, and uh, we realize that uh, it's not going to appear as we go. Um, but I think the federal government, the tribe, the company are all uh, you know, good possibilities for significant reimbursement of costs. Members of the Emergency Commission expressed a willingness to keep approving emergency funding as needed to keep everyone involved safe. For tonight's restaurant report card, we cover some popular dining spots in the Fargo-Moorhead metro area. They all have their own unique appeal, but as reporter Cornelius Hawker explains, two of them have critical violations you need to know about. This might be the home of that finger-looking good chicken, but KFC off 25th Street in Fargo received two critical violations on their latest inspection report and eight non-critical violations. We were allowed inside, but the manager couldn't comment on camera. She said the critical violations came from silly mistakes. The switch for the cooler that keeps the coleslaw at the proper temperature wasn't turned on, and a hose for the sanitizer needed to be replaced. She said she's fixed everything and she hopes to pass their next inspection with no violations. Up next is Doolittle's Woodfire Grill. They had one critical violation, but if you take a look at their inspection reports, this same violation, not keeping potentially hazardous foods at the proper temperature, was marked last time. Because of corporate rules, the manager couldn't give a comment as to if they plan on fixing this problem. Now, we go to this week's Clean Plate Award winner. Brutus's Brick House has been open just shy of two months, but is quickly becoming a popular restaurant and bar in West Fargo, which is why the employees work hard to make the best impression on every customer. You need to totally be on your A-game all the time, you know? And we all get that, and we all have the same expectations. You know, managers are expected to do the same things as all of the employees. We all work together, we're all a family, and yeah, this job is important to all of us. For Restaurant Report Card, I'm Cornelius Hawker. To take a look at the complete inspection reports, go to our website, find this story on valleynewslive.com.